In a world that seems to be falling apart, love remains. Love's name is Jesus. Grammy Award-winning country music artist Linda Davis began to catch the attention of the country music world due to her unique ability to interpret a song, one being superstar Reba McIntyre. Together they recorded their duet, Does He Love You, went on to become a number one hit, earning both artists several awards, including a Grammy. Today, she is winning Grammy Awards with her husband, Lane Scott, and daughters, Hillary of Lady A and Riley. Releasing their two-time Grammy-winning album, Hillary Scott and the Scott Family, Love Remains. This is her story. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Linda, what a pleasure and honor to sit down with you. I was so excited when I heard that you were going to be on today's Nashville. Well, I'm thrilled, and our mutual friend Barbara Fairchild had wonderful things to say about you and your heart, and oh, I was anxious to uh, I just meet love, you myself. I just love her so much, and I do too. And what a beautiful person! Yes, she but is. I want to hear all about you. I mean, I have followed you for a long time, but I want to know where it all started. Well, I don't know if you read the bio part about I'm from Texas, but I'm very proud of that fact. I moved to Nashville when I was 19, chasing my dream to be on the Grand Ole Opry. That was the goal. And it didn't happen right away. It's, I tell the story that I thought they were just going to throw the doors wide open and invite me on stage. But it took a little while. I needed to figure things out and pay some more dues. But that was what drew me here. And then... I met my husband just shortly after I moved to town, and that's really what God got me here for, Lame. to meet my husband, yes. And then our love story, we're almost 40 years married, so that in itself is another episode. Well, just tell me about him a little bit. Oh, a little bit. Is well, he in the music business He too? is. Lang is from South Carolina. He moved to Nashville the same year I did, just a few months before. We had some mutual friends, and that's how we met, but he's very talented singer, songwriter, musician, and actually um, we both toured together with Reba. We, we still make music together, and so that's what drew us together. That's how we got to know each other, but the rest is, is all God's plan for us to, to have met and you know, created two children out of the deal. So, oh yeah, we're going to talk about that in a little bit yeah. too. But and the grandchildren and the grandchildren. Okay. I mean, you have <laughs> such a history. So you were nineteen when you came here. Did you have musical background when you came, or was you mostly just you just wanted to sing? And I mean, that was your passion growing up as a teen, always and before. So as a little girl. I was the baby of three kids, and we went to this little missionary Baptist church in the country in East Texas. And it was family mostly at the church, but friends who were like family. And I was one of, you know, a handful of kids that loved to sing and sing loud. And I was brave. I, I was fearless. And so learning to sing, you know, my little gospel songs and uh, encouraged to sing them. So that just kind of lit my fire. And then, of course, the country music was in the house and, you know, Hee Haw and the Grand Ole Opry on our little TV, one of the three channels that we had, and the radio. And so it music was just always in me, not because there was any training. There was no formal training, but it was just the love of it. Everybody around me encouraged me. No one really knew what to help me out with. So you just traveled it to out. Nashville and... 19, were you by yourself? Well, mom and daddy brought me with pulling a U-Haul and helped me bring a few things to set up housekeeping. A few pots and pans mama let me use from her kitchen and very, very basic things. But I didn't, I didn't care. I didn't need anything. I just needed to be here. And I'm so thankful. What were those that, few years like when uh, you first came? Lean. <laughs> Figuring out how to make this money stretch out to, to pay for everything and then figure out how to manage that, you know, because, and, and I was so green in every aspect because I trusted 
people. And the good Lord was so good to me to not allow me to find myself in situations to where I couldn't get out of them. You know, I was, you hear a lot of stories or read some. I was not that person. I, he just protected me from myself and from anybody else that had, you know, anything negative or uh, harmful. He now, took care of me. were you a believer at that time? Were oh, yes. you your faith? Oh, yes. Tell me about that. Always. I mean, from the time I was a little girl, I was saved and baptized in that same little church that I was describing earlier. You know how we all kind of get on and off the path and and start kind of forging our own way and, and not really praying about it or getting the Lord's opinion about things. We just kind of make... Uh, blaze our own trail. And, and in spite of that, he still protected me and kept me covered and allowed me to attain the goals that I had and more. Oh my goodness. It'd take days to describe all of the beautiful things that he has lined out for me better than I had my own plans because I was just clueless. So there has just been some, some beautiful dreams that have come true. And um, Can you share any oh, of those? Well, the, I got to be on the Grand Ole Opry, not just, but a few years after I moved here and have been on it since. Every time it's like that little girl in East Texas, it's like my dreams come true again. It's like the first time every time. So, and then of course, my daughter fast forward a few years and she and her partners, Dave and Charles are invited to be members of the Opry. So know. if it, you know, it's a mama's, uh, happy places what a, when what your a kids blessing. are happy. What a, an amazing, blessed family that you have. Take me back to that time when you first stepped on the Grand Old Opry. What mm. was it like? Uh, Mr. Hank Snow introduced me. Backstage, Mr. Roy Acuff, I mean, Jeannie Seeley, all of my heroes, some of my childhood heroes and still heroes. Well, I just felt like I had arrived and and how old were you? Oh, at that point, I was probably about 21, about 21, 22. So getting here at 19. So it took me a few years. A lot of the artists now, they probably have the same idea. You know, they show up and, and they're fixing to step on stage just like I had that idea. And some of them do get opportunities quicker than maybe it happened for me. But it, it was just such a thrill and such a... Um, I guess surreal would be a good word because I dreamed about it and it was better than I dreamed about. And most of my life has been better than what I dreamed it would be. Do you remember the song that you sang? It was probably one of the singles I had out at the time, but honestly, that doesn't stick out in my mind. Were as you much writing as your own moment. music then? Not always, not always. Uh, in the 90s when my career uh, was, was really at its peak, some of the artists didn't write. Reba didn't write all her songs. George Strait didn't write all his songs. Naomi and Winona didn't write theirs. I mean, well, Naomi wrote several of theirs, but uh, that wasn't such the, the combination as it is now. But I'm proud for my daughter that their generation of artists do write most of their songs because it's just, it's just better to, to own your, your songs, to have, you know, and have a have a participation in what you sing night after night. You know what, from the grand old Opry stage to stages around the world, it's amazing what you've gone through and where God has taken you, and we're gonna talk about that when we come back. 